Hello, everybody. Sorry we're a couple minutes late. We had some technical difficulty getting our uh, joint sale together, but you have found Trusty Huckster's Vintage Live Sale, and tonight is another four seller, one sale event. Uh, if you had missed uh, some of the announcements previously, the entire month of October is my celebration of my one year in the resale business. And as part of that, I have turned every one of my live sales this month into a group sale. So tonight uh, joining me is, uh, uh, returning is George, the antique nomad. He's uh, joining us from Seattle. And then in her first live sale ever is Katie from Vintage and Vinyl. Uh, she's joining us tonight. And technically, uh, we've got Dottie Lynn from Triple S Mercantile. This is technically her first live sale, but she sold stuff online before with Norma Jean Plus One and some others. So what we're going to say this might be her first one, but she's 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 a, she's a veteran. She's just not been on the show before. Uh, so uh, and again, I'm trusty. So tonight uh, we are going to be doing our uh, live sale, uh, vintage sale. We are doing uh, this as a standard format selling. Uh, we are not doing any auctions tonight. Uh, so if you've joined any other live sales, if you're new to my channel, pretty much they all work the same. Just keep in mind that we won't be doing uh, bid a you know, minute to win it or offer up or any of that. This is a traditional claiming first item. Uh, so each person will be showcasing their item. They will be giving a price. They will then be announcing the number. And the first person that we see in our side of the chat to uh, list that number will be the one who claims the item. So you want to make sure you're refreshing your internet as often as possible so you've got the best chance uh, to individually claim items. A couple general housekeeping items if you've not participated in a four seller event before. Uh, we will still be able to combine shipping within each seller. So if you buy two items from me, I can package those together and I can create an invoice uh, shipping those items to you uh, in one, one shipment. All prices you hear are item only, and then we will add shipping. What we cannot do is ship a combine across sellers because I am shipping from Chicago. Katie is shipping from Jackson, near the Jacksonville, Florida area. Uh, George is shipping from Seattle and Dottie Lynn is shipping from North Carolina. So we have four se very separate states represented here tonight. Uh, and just keep that in mind that we're a little bit more geographically spread out than usual. Uh, so like George is representing the West Coast, Dottie and Katie are representing the East Coast, and I'm in the Midwest. So we've got a little diversity, but just keep that in mind. We all do our best to make sure we package our items and get you the best pricing we can. Um, and so just remember that for combining. Really quick, going to say, you know, let's see who's joining us tonight. So we've got uh, Kim from Oh My Vintage. Oh, we got somebody, I, I think somebody new, uh, Pickled Tink. Pickled Tink. Uh, oh, also from Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, Jamie, I'm uh, from California. Amy Gaston, uh, welcome back, Amy. Uh, Christina has joined us from Christina's Postcards and Patina. We've got uh, Michelle, must have finished up one of her marathon sales. She does hers earlier on Thursdays. Uh, so she's from Wisconsin. She has great uh, live sales as well. So thanks for joining us, Michelle. Uh, Found Again, we've, uh, we have Kelly from Found Again. She joined our live sale either last week or the week before, I can't remember which one she was on, uh, but she's been with us before. Harry has joined us. Uh, Harry's also part of the, he's not been doing live sales, but he's definitely part of the thrift or reseller community and, and has some really, uh, has a great channel you guys should be uh, checking out. Uh, Rebecca Kennison, I think that might be a new name. So appreciate, love seeing uh, some, some new names in here. Penny Forshi, I've seen you in some other chats. Judy's returned, Randy's returned, Carrie's returned. Uh, so we got a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of names we recognize as well. Uh, so once again, side street also was at a previous sale. Uh, once again, if you're new to this, uh, the general format is the same as any other shows. Uh, but if you have any questions, put them in the chat and I've got a few moderators that'll be able to answer questions. Uh, so what we're going to be doing is round robin and to start things out, we are going to be starting with George from the antique moment nomad, who again is shipping from Seattle. Well, hi, everybody. I am shipping from Seattle. I'm having a great time here. And I just was in a house this afternoon. I just got back in time to do this. And I have three or four things from that place that are actually going to be for sale, including the very first thing I'm showing here. I'm trying to pick things that will ship easily and not cost a whole lot of money. And I also thought, well, you know, Thanksgiving is coming. So the folks had this. I'm going to show the edge of the box first, even though it's upside down. 
and then I will show you just in time for Thanksgiving. And you know it's clean and unstained because it has never been out of its box. This is, whoa, here we go. It's going to flop around too. This is by the Bates Company, made in the USA. And this is damask. Or, and damask is this type of fabric where it has sort of a sheen to it in designs. This particular tablecloth is four feet by seven feet, so it'll fit pretty much your standard table. And it would be nice to, if you're a reseller, to use as an underdrop for your um, pictures, perhaps. Or if you still serve Thanksgiving dinner, then this is maybe something for you. Uh, the Bates tablecloth, new in the box, from about 1965, approximately, when these folks got married is $10 and the, the damask cloth is $10 for number 13. Number 13, the damask cloth for $10. Hey guys, this is Katie with Vintage and Vinyl. I'm so honored to be selling with this esteemed group of people tonight. The first item I have for you is a favorite of mine. I love my advertising tins, so I'm going to share one with you all. This is something I've gotten into a little bit more recently. You guys know I love my typewriter ribbon pens and other advertising, but I love old tobacco tins. So this is a hickory pipe mixture tobacco tin, and it's probably from around, I'd say, 1950, 1960. It does have a little rust. Uh, of course, all these advertising tins do, and it's got a really neat lid with the writing on the inside that says, John Middleton Incorporated, Philadelphia, manufactured and guaranteed since 1856. And this is a fabulous red hickory pipe mixture tin that you could put in your display for 4th of July or all year around. And this hickory pipe mixture tin here is going to be $7 and you can have it for number 51, number 51. Okay, guys. First up, I have a little vase, if I can get this right. And as you can see, it's got a lizard or an iguana on the front of it. There is no maker's mark. It is petite, it is small, it won't cost much to ship. It is a really pretty green color. And you can have that for putting number 39, which is $5. Number 39, $5. All right. And my first item uh, that I've got tonight, uh, every once in a while, I'll try and find something that reminds me of the people I've got on my joint sale. It didn't do super well this week, but I did grab one that serves double duty and it is a wood carving. Uh, one of uh, Katie from Vintage and Vinyl, uh, many talents is she also does woodworking. I'm not sure if she actually carves, but uh, so this is a pelican, which probably could be from Florida, maybe not. Uh, but I've got this little uh, wood carved piece, probably a tourist piece, but it actually doesn't say anything on it. So it really is just a nice little shelf sitter. Uh, there's some neat detail uh, in the beak and the uh, feathering on the uh, pelican himself, and then just the raw bark around the uh, outsides. He's not marked in any way. We can sell, tell by some of the discoloration that he's got a little bit of age to him. So I've got this cute little uh, pelican wood carve piece. It's available for $6. $6 for the pelican, and you can have him by giving me number 93. George, you're on mute. There we go, now we got unmuted. I knew we were gonna do that at least once. So this next piece is a music box. These were popularly done in the 1970s. Let you listen to it for just a little bit, a rather famous tune. And they did these as various instruments. They're made, uh, the top part is plastic, and it's got a pretty good musical uh, box. And then the bottom part is wood. And I thought these were pretty neat. Oh, Gina Marie wanted to know who got the tablecloth. I'm sorry, you got the tablecloth, Gina Marie. Got to remember to do that. I'm not used to being first, so I'll try to get this right. Okay, so uh, Gina Marie won the tablecloth, number 13. And now we're back to the mandolin music box. Uh, these were popular in the 1970s. There were various instruments. And this one I got in Colorado. And it is priced at $10, and 
ten dollars for the mandolin number 14 the mandolin music box okay guys so uh no one wanted the hickory pike mixture 10 but you can still have it if you would like it the next item that i have for you all tonight is another favorite of mine i love glass and this is a beautiful piece of sandwich glass uh, sandwich glass is made from a mold in sandwich massachusetts and many companies made this and you can tell that this is anchor hawking sandwich glass by the way the flowers are this is probably a juice glass and i think it's just fabulous it measures three and a half inches tall and this would be great at christmas you could put your candy canes in it or use it for toothbrushes in the bathroom anything you want this is a fabulous green piece of pressed sandwich glass and it does have a little bit of gunk on the inside there, but you can clean that up with a toothbrush. In fact, I'll make sure that gets clean before I ship it out. I did wash it already once, but it's fabulous. No chips or cracks. Wonderful little piece of green glass there. And you can have the green glass for $6. And you can have it for number 60. $6, number 60 for the green juice glass. Hey guys, thank you. This is a set of brass candlesticks. They're about, there you go, size dimension. And one has the sticker right there that shows made in India, genuine brass. I've left the patina. So if someone does want to clean them, they would clean up very nicely. I like the shape on these. And you can have these for doing, telling me number 41, number 41, $7 for both. All right, and for uh, my last item, the wood pelican, congratulations to Empty Nesting 2 uh, for picking up the wooden carving of the pelican on the pier. Uh, my next item uh, is the closest thing I could come up with, with for a, uh, an, um, an homage to George. Um, this is an item that I had picked up from uh, on my trip to visit George in Kentucky. Uh, several of us uh, converged on George's uh, state sale uh, back in, I want to say it's the end of June. Uh, uh, Jeffrey from Real Nifty Vintage. Um, we had uh, Misty from Thrifter Junker Vintage Hunter with Fat Bird Finds. Uh, we all just kind of got together and uh, basically checked out an estate sale. I turned it into a long weekend and drove uh, down there from Chicago. And this was a, a piece that I picked up in Paxton, Illinois. And it is a uh, shaving mug. So it has the uh, image of a lion on the side and it is decorated on both sides. So you've got an identical lion uh, on both sides. It is uh, marked on the bottom Mohawk, which I did have a clue because the brush itself was included with it, but doing some research on it, researching the Mohawk and then this image, that's how I actually discovered it was truly a mustache uh, cup because unlike some that you have the, the little um, separations in, this one is just the wider uh, and then the brush actually can fit and store inside of it. Uh, but so this would be the uh, cream brush. So didn't get it from George, but picked it up on a trip to meet George. So, you know, this would be my homage to George. So this is in perfect condition, no chips, no cracks, with the cool graphic again of the lion on all sides, uh, not decorated in the middle, and you get the brush uh, that goes along with it. So the mustache uh, mug as and uh, as well as the brush, you get the pair for $12. You can get that by giving me number 83, 83, $12 for the mustache mug. Well, that's really neat. It was so great to have all of you come down and to uh, get to meet you in person. And that is a really great little piece. I like the uh, graphic on that very much. And my next piece I got actually when I was on my way to Colorado to visit uh, with Yvonne Thrifty Rich. And I'll have a video coming out with her soon. This is Lucy Van Pelt, of course, from Peanuts fame. Before I go on though, I should say, I'm sorry, I've got to remember to do this right. Uh, Penny Forche, you got the mandolin music box uh, number 14 for $10. So please do send your email, I, I think we, reiterated, please send emails to us so that we can set up PayPal billing for all of you folks. Okay, now we're, uh, oh, hi, Misty. Um, 
hope you enjoyed the clown in my video. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'm going to um, go back to Lucy now. What's cool about Lucy, she was made by Mattel. She has a 1966 patent date on her, and that actually is when this came out. A lot of people get confused with peanuts because they um, say that, um, you know, the dates oftentimes say 1958, 1970. Those were dates they used on tons of stuff, even in modern years. But the more specific years other than those are when they actually came out. So uh, she is a walker, and this is the walker. So you can see that she moves. She moves her arms when you're going. And um, she's just really cute. She's in great shape. And Lucy Van Pelt is $15, and she is number 10. So first person with number 10 gets Lucy. Okay, wonderful, guys. So the uh, sandwich glass, juice glass that's in the green color went to Jeannie at Norma Jean Plus One. Thank you so much for picking that up. Now, the next item I have is a fabulous brooch, and this is in the gold color. And this is a really heavy, nice brooch. It is signed. It is signed RSK. Now, when I looked up that company or that designer, because it does have uh, periods in between, so it does stand for something. And I don't know, I couldn't find any information about it. However, I just think that it's fabulous and it would look really great on a scarf. So here I have my grandmother's scarf and you could tie it and then you could have the brooch next to it. I mean, look how fabulous that looks. Really, really great. And it's perfect on any outfit. The nice thing about gold is it matches everything. And I do believe it's a dandy lion. And it's just really nice, really heavy, wonderful quality. And you can have this gold tone brooch here, signed RSK for $8 by giving me the number 62. $8.62 for the gold toned dandelion brooch. I like your cards, by the way, Katie. That was a good idea. All right, next up, we have a Fire King. They call these either cereal bowls or they would be good for snacks or ice cream. And this is in the fruit pattern. Not marked, but it is Fire King. Okay, about that size, not big. And you can have that by telling me number 29, 29 for five bucks. 29 for $5. All right. Uh, before I, I continue on, I just want to make a nice general comment to try and keep the comments in the chat positive, pleasant, nice. Um, and, and we will uh, try and address, um, just as a reminder, all the sellers were trying to give the price first and then the number. So we recognize that that is the tradition for all the resellers. Um, there's a lot of moving parts on our end. So I apologize if sometimes that gets flipped, um, but we will try and work on that. But until then, we'll try and do this all together and then we'll try and be nice to each other in the chat. So just gonna leave it at that uh, and then go on to my next item. So this item was uh, picked up actually in my most recent uh, sourcing trip. This was uh, when I went out to visit the Huckster Helper while she was at school uh, and then visiting Tim from over the years uh, on that trip. I picked up this uh, piece, which is a bottle opener in the shape of a whale. So it's not marked. There's really no indications of maker or anything like that or age on it. It is an artificial, I don't know even say it's a patina. It's just a finish to do the finish of the scale of the, like the surface of the whale. Um, I'm going to say it's cast aluminum, but it is fairly heavy on the front end. The reason I think it's aluminum is because the tail end is actually fairly light. That if you try and like cantilever it, there's a quite a bit of weight here in the body of the whale, even though it is hollowed a little bit you can actually tell, I mean, the, this probably weighs about 10 or 11, well, probably almost a pound by itself. I should have weighed it. Um, but it's just a really cool piece. He's got the eyes, you know, done in there. Um, the the kind of like the little, little bit of a hint of a mouth, which matches where the seam was, and then the actual place to do uh, the bottle top opening in the back. It's in great condition. You know, there's no issues with it. Um, just kind of a cool, uh, Cat, you know, cool looking bottle opener for your, whether it's vintage or contemporary bar collection, this would just look great sitting out on the counter 
And I thought he was kind of cool. So I picked him up and I can offer him to you for $7. So $7 for the whale bottle opener by giving me number 76. Okay, very good. Well, there's cool stuff coming out tonight. And I want to mention that Helen Casey was the winner of Lucy. Um, and thank you for being patient with us, me in particular. I'm still uh, learning how to do these lives, and this is great practice for me. I'm just glad that I have good internet connection. If you saw the last time I was on here, it was, well, difficult. So uh, thanks for bearing with us. And my next piece is a piece from the 1920s, and it is a talc tin. Now, tins have been collectible for a long time. I used to not pay a lot of attention to talc, honestly, because I thought, well, you know, it's a bathroom product and they're cute, but big deal. But look at the amazing peacock on this guy. I love that it goes around the entire thing. It's triangular. It's 1920s. And the prices on talc tins are starting to increase because recently talc has been, uh, talcum powder has been shown to be not really healthy for us. And there's been a lot of controversy about that. And because of that, the prices on these are starting to go up. And so I found a collection on my way out to Washington in the town of Sela, Washington and bought every one. This was one of them. And even though I think that it's worth more, honestly, I'm offering it for $12 and it is number 24, $12, the talc tin is number 24. So the gold tone dandelion brooch went to Auntie Christy. Thank you so much. It's gonna be gorgeous on any of your outfits. Now the next item I have is fun. Now I love my vintage Christmas as I know all of you guys do. And I found some fabulous ornament hangers and I think these are so cool. This first one is definitely older. I believe it to be from the 1950s. But look at the graphics on this. I mean, the Christmas tree is everything. And it still has the ornaments in it. Not ornaments, but ornament hangers. And that's great because I think that the older ornament hangers are just way more sturdy. I actually prefer them to the modern ones. The modern ones are kind of flimsy. So this is probably from the 1950s. It does have a little wear on the side of the box made in USA, but it's amazing that this has survived as long as it has because it is paper and older. This is the Paper Novelty Manufacturing Company out of New York. Now, I'm also going to be selling this ornament hanger a lot with this one. Now, this one is newer, but it is still fabulous. Look at the graphics right there, and it's new old stock, I believe. It's never been opened. Now, it has the 39 cent price tag. It does have a barcode, and the barcode is meaning that it's older than um, the 60s because in the late 70s, they started using barcodes and UPCs. So this is older, um, uh, newer, I should say, than this one. But you will get these wonderful, fabulous ornament hangers, great in a display, or you can use the ornament hangers and then display the boxes next to your shiny brights or any vintage Christmas. And you can have these awesome lot ornament, uh, Christmas ornament boxes. You can have them for $6 by giving me the number 61. $6, number 61 for the ornament hangers. Hi guys. Up next, I have a wood, homemade wood piece. It has got lovely cherries on it. It was handmade by, I think that says Brian. There's a little signature down there at the bottom. The back just has a nail, but you could easily put a hook on the back of it. Cute cherries. Number 31 for $5. Again, number 31 for $5. All right. I want to do a thank you to Melissa Roy uh, for picking up the whale bottle opener. Uh, you claimed uh, they were the first to claim that item. Uh, and I think you might be a new name to me or sometimes people change their names. So uh, just don't forget to send an email to the email address that's scrolling across the bottom of the screen, uh, letting me know your shipping information so I can get you a proper invoice. Uh, if you, for our next item, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen these as a sneak peek of some of what I was going to be selling tonight. 
And I don't do a lot. I don't uh, showcase a lot usually because I forget. Um, but these were one of the, I think this was the first item I put out as a uh, highlight. And it is my collection of vintage Christmas postcards. All of the postcards are, uh, they've all been stamped. They've all been mailed. And I'm going to try and read them properly. So this one, Okay, this one is dated 1918. This one is postmarked 1910. This one is postmarked 1911. This one is postmarked... I think this, this is also in the teens. I can't, no, I can't quite read it uh, without my glasses on. I should have written these down. Uh, they were all from the teens. This is 1911, except for one, which is coming up. This is 1910. And then this is the only one that wasn't from the teens. This is from 1934. So it is a collection of six postcards. You get all six in the lot. Again, they're all stamped. They all have the dates that I referenced. And you can get all six, or all, I'm sorry, seven, six from 1910, uh, 19 teens, and one uh, from 1934. You get the entire lot for 25 bucks. So $25 for the set of postcards. You get them if I give me number 92. $25, 92 for the full lot of postcards. You're muted, George. Good, I swear I hit that button. I was just bragging about how I was learning as I was going along. <laughs> anyway. Um, I have a sense it's about cocktail hour for some folks, especially out here in the West where it just uh, is a little after five. I thought I would put up these, uh, well, first, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting my uh, bookkeeping. The Talc Peacock, uh, it went to Found Again. Uh, so number 24, the Peacock Talcum Tin went to Found Again for $12. So now let's get back to happy hour. Um, what I have here, and these are actually from my collection. I still am collecting barware, but I have gotten on a kick of the cobalt swizzle sticks that have the names of the stork club and the old bars on them. So I decided to let go of my red glass collection. These are from the 1950s. They are clear glass rods with red down the middle. And I just think that they're really cool. Uh, they used glass swizzle sticks before they did all those cheap plastic ones. So these are going to date from the uh, early 1950s. They've got that great red 50s kitchenware. There is a set of six, and I am selling them basically for a dollar a piece because it's six dollars for the set, and they are number. Here we go. Come on, number 21. You might see it before yeah, I do. There we go. Number 21, $6 for the six swizzle sticks. Congratulations to Jamie at Mid-Century Wasted. You won the lot of ornament hanger boxes. Those are going to look great with your shiny bright and mid-century collection. So the next item that I have for sale is really fun. Now, I love flower frogs, and the ones with the metal tines are just fabulous to, to stick all kinds of paper ephemera in. So I have a picture of my grandfather when he was little in this metal flower frog to demonstrate that. This is a fabulous metal flower frog. It was original uh, in green color. I believe it was originally green, but someone has spray painted it gold. And it does have all of the tines. Now, this little set of tines are bent here a little bit, but that doesn't affect putting anything in it. Now, this guy's pretty heavy, but he's very sturdy, and he's just perfect with a picture, as you saw. It looks great in it. You can put a Halloween postcard in it, all kinds of things you can do with these metal flower frogs. They look great in displays all year round, very perfect for paper ephemera, old postcards, photos, etc., etc., and you can have this flower frog. Let me tell you the measurements while I'm at it. He is two and one half inches wide, and he is pretty heavy. I'd say he weighs a little under a pound, but nice, sturdy flower frog, and you can have this flower frog here for five dollars, or I have eight dollars. Whoops, learning to read here on the screen. So eight dollars for the metal flower frog, and you can have him by giving me 
Number 54, $8.54 for the metal flower frog. Making sure I did not do it, George did. I had to unmute it. Okay, guys. What we have now is perfect for Thanksgiving, fall time of the year. It's an acorn glass, two piece candy dish. I think these look excellent with fairy lights in them. It does say on the bottom, it is Ellie Smith. Okay. And on the top, it's got the cutest little acorn on there. It is amber and looks great with a candle or fairy lights. Sorry, I was doing this wrong. It's $10, $10 by giving me number 42. I got it right this time. No worries, Dottie Lynn. We're all here to have fun, um, but uh, we do want to keep everyone everyone happy. Uh, so thank you to uh, Carolina Princess Sweet Treats and Pretties uh, for picking up the set of Christmas postcards. I hope you enjoy those. Um, one of the things I forgot to announce, I mentioned that this is my one year anniversary, so I'm doing some special things. One of them is my trusty huckster uh, coasters. Uh, so I've, I've mentioned these at my in the sales so far. Every order uh, that I get this month uh, will get a free coaster uh, thrown into the box. So if you are looking for a trusty huckster mercantile coaster, you can get one for free just by placing an order for something else that you see from me tonight. Uh, so my next item, I just picked this up recently. And to be honest, I don't know much about him. This the where I picked him up, they said he is a finger puppet, but he has been attached somehow. I think he's just kind of hot glued or glued into this. So I think this is a maybe a contemporarily made piece. I don't think necessarily that that finger puppet is particularly old. Uh, and when I found him, he was sitting next to a finger puppet that looked uh, very freakishly like the Tin Man. So I have a feeling this is supposed to be Toto, but there's only Toto and the Tin Man. And so I didn't want the Tin Man, so I only picked up Toto. So he's in this kind of patinaed, rusty, like box-like thing, uh, which I think is legitimately old. Uh, but again, I think this is a, a modernly created, assembled piece. So you can hang him uh, like this, or he does sit flat on his own, or you can create a, uh, um, rock him back a little bit, and he can sit, you know, on this this little stand. Um, I also will highlight that I had a dog item tonight because I wanted to remind everyone to mark your calendars for November twelfth. Uh, we will be doing a one of my live sale for Thursday the 12th will turn into a fundraiser for the Just One More Dachshund Rescue, J-O-M-D-R dot org. This is not a dachshund, but it's a dog, so it makes me think of it. Um, what will happen during that is I've had some great feedback from a lot of vintage resellers, a lot of other YouTube channels have donated tons of items to me. And if you follow me on uh, Instagram, I, I announced today there is an epic prize that we are creating for every $5 donation you give to JOMDR's PayPal page, you will get an entry into a drawing, which you will have a chance to win at this, at the latest count, 26 mystery boxes from 26 different vintage resellers from around the country. So uh, George is participating, Katie is participating, uh, I am participating. Uh, there are 26 individual resellers have already participated and I get new additions every day. So for every $5 you give to jomdr.org, uh, to their PayPal, not to me, to theirs, um, and I'll get, I will post that information. You get a drawing and you will just be getting packages, you know, coming out your ears. We don't, I don't even know what you're gonna get. You're just gonna get 20, at least 26 individual mystery gifts. So anyway. Here's a dog. So we got Toto in the little basket, well, metal box, basket, hingy thing. And you can have him for eight bucks. So $8 for Toto. You can have him by giving me number 80. Number eight, number 80, $8 for Toto in a, in a bucket. Okay, I think I'm unmuted this time. So this is good. Uh, yes, I am looking forward to participating in the Dachshund gift box giveaway and it sounds like it's going to a good cause and Suzanne McLean you were the winner of the swizzle stick set for six dollars so number 21 went to Suzanne McLean I want to also show my next item and this is a toothpick but if you see it there's some special things about it this is custard glass 
And I wish you could see it from my angle because with the light coming at me, you see it's got a really great opalescent fire. You can see it's almost transparent and it really glows around the edge. It also glows under a black light. And the thing that is, uh, let's see if I can get it to where you can really see a little bit. It's got red beading around the edge. This is Heise glass. There we go, that's a little better. Yeah, Oops. gotta put my hand behind, there we go. So Heise glass was made in Ohio from the 1890s to about 1957, but these pieces that were custard glass did use uranium in the batch. They are gilded with gold paint on the end. This does glow under a black light. If it was a little darker here, I would show you. It glows very nicely. And this Heise uranium glass, uh, Vaseline glass, custard glass, toothpick, is $14, and it is number, boy, this is hard to show. I should use black. Number 17 is the Heise uranium glass toothpick. 17 for Heise uranium custard glass. Congratulations to Maria at Empty Nesting too. You got the metal flower frog. You're gonna have so much fun with that. And Patrick, I am very honored to participate in your J-O-M-D-R Dachshund fundraising event. That's gonna be really fun. Whoever gets those mystery boxes is going to have a heyday opening them. So the next item I'd love to share in my live sale tonight is a fabulous Scotch tape tin. Now these are very collectible among our little group here and rightfully so because they are so fun. And this is Scotch all weather vinyl plastic tape. Now this one is unique because it has just a little bit of the plaid down at the bottom and the rest is red and then the plaid goes around the outside. Now this does have a zip code on it. It's made in the USA. It's St. Paul, Minnesota 5511 right there on the Scotch tape tin. So this has to be after 1963 because that's when five digit zip codes were used. And this still has the tape in it. So you're getting a full roll of vinyl plastic electrical tape in the, the box. Fabulous graphics, great for a picnic display in the summertime with that plaid, or you can use it at Christmas. All year round, the Scotch tape tin is fun and displays great to stack something on it because now you've got this cool graphic on the side. So you could build height in a display, or you could set this any way you wanted to. Just a fabulous metal tin. Of course, it does have some wear, but that's how I like all my metal tins is with a little rust and age and, and love. It's been well used. So you can have this fabulous Scotch tape tin for a fantastic price of $7. Here's the Scotch tape tin, $7 by giving me the number 64. 64 for the Scotch tape tin. If I was online, I would have bid for that, Katie. All right, next up, we have a Fitz and Floyd turkey plate. This is in the Omnibus collection, and it was from 1996. There are no dings, scratches, anything. They do have the places on the back for you to be able to hang it from a plate hanger. Um, just a little tiny bit of sticker residue right here, which I will get off. And you can have the turkey plate for eight dollars by giving me number 44. eight dollars number 44. okay i'll start out first with an apology to Dottie lynn i had uh had edited an old banner and had forgotten to change your instagram and youtube name so that is now corrected Dottie lynn as i said is from triple s mercantile but i did not have that in the banner so thank you nathaniel for pointing that out it is now corrected I will also then announce that uh, the little Toto bucket thing, which Carolyn said was something that went down a well, uh, which kind of makes sense, um, went to Dawn Schonkweiler, and Dawn actually runs the Just One More Dachshund Rescue, uh, and she put a little piece of trivia in the chat, people hadn't seen it, that uh, Toto was supposed to be a dachshund. So they probably decided that, that dachshunds would bark too much. No, uh, not that terriers don't. But uh, anyway, so congratulations and thank you, Don, for taking home Toto. Uh, and I hope you enjoy him. Uh, my next item is uh, this time I'm doing an uh, homage to one of uh, our huckster hecklers. Uh, this one is for Nate. So Nate is a big fan of Wedgwood. And anytime I come across Wedgwood, I think of Nate. And so this time I've come across a little Wedgwood box. 
Uh, so you've got the traditional Jasperware uh, piece with the uh, image on the top, as well as the rim, and then a decoration along the base, all the way around with the applied medallions. It is a signed piece, as all Wedgwood is signed, uh, with the traditional markings on the left of the JA. Uh, it is just a great piece of Jasperware in wonderful condition. And you get the Jasperware box for $14 by giving me number 89. Number 14, uh, number 89, $14 for the Wedgwood box. Okay, so the uh, person who gets the Heise Custard Glass toothpick is Tippy Winks Vintage. I just love saying that. So Tippy Winks Vintage, you are the uh, lucky person who gets number 17, the Heise toothpick. And the next piece I have is also glass, but this is a little different era. And this one may be English, but it is a really neat 1930s perfume bottle or scent bottle. It's got little feet. It's in amber glass. I just was told today by another viewer, let's see if we can get that where you can see it a little better, that amber glass is really starting to be collectible again. Uh, partly because we're in the fall season, and of course fall colors go with it, but I guess amber is starting to show up in a lot of the decorator magazines from what I'm understanding. So that was interesting to me. Um, it has a little cloudiness on the inside, but I think that probably that would clean out. I have not made an attempt to do that. It could be from having some uh, fluid in there for a while. People use these on tables for other purposes and other fluids besides perfume and cologne, but it was originally intended for that. And it's just a really neat little piece. It's about five inches tall. It is, again, from the late 1930s, streamlined deco design. And the price of this piece is $15, and it is number... I'm going to have to write these in black. Sorry about that. It's number 20, folks. Number 2020, the perfume. Uh, Michelle at Comfy Cozy Living gets the Scotch Tape 10. Michelle, I think that is going to look great in your collection. Michelle has a big collection of Scotch Tape 10s. So congratulations, Michelle. If you are new and you have not uh, bought from me, obviously you haven't because this is my first live sale. But please email me at the email down below to claim an item and I will get your PayPal invoices out. Now, who's ready for some vintage Christmas? Because I think this advertisement is fabulous. This advertisement is from a 1949 National Geographic magazine. And look at the Santa, you guys. This is everything. This would look fabulous framed. I've got some advertisements framed behind me. You can put this on a refrigerator with some magnets in your Christmas displays, do all kinds of things with this. Now, this is an ad for Plymouth, and it says, my daddy's been a good boy too, and he wants a new Plymouth. That's what the ad says on the bottom, and you've got this fabulous boy in the overalls with the father holding presents and a fedora and this awesome, awesome Santa Claus with the Christmas tree in the back. This ad is fabulous. Now you also get a bonus because the back has advertisements as well. And there is an ad here for Weston exposure meters with some really cool uh, ornaments. And then you get an ad that you can write in for Phoenix, Arizona, Valley of the Sun dinner club. And then you also get an ad for four colors in one pencil, Norma multicolor pencil. So you've got both ads, you can display it either way you would like. There is a little bit of wear on this side here, just from where it was attached in the magazine, but otherwise an absolutely fantastic condition. And I love this advertisement. So you can get this Christmas advertisement for Plymouth from the magazine. By the way, it does measure 10 by nine and three quarter inches from 1949 for only $6 by giving me number 67. $6 for the Plymouth Magazine advertisement featuring the fantastic Santa. That was nice. All right, guys, up next we have a metal and glass wall sconce. It does come out. It holds a tea light or, a, you know, one of the smaller votive candles. That part's glass. This part's metal. It does have the hook here to put it on the wall. 
Raspberry Boho. Set that down without breaking it. And you can have that for $3. $3 by giving me number 26. There you go. Number 26. All right. And I want to thank uh, my last item, the Wedgwood box, went to Tippy Winks Vintage. And I've seen you in many of the other chats and sales, but I don't think you've ever purchased from me. So just again, make sure you're sending emails to each of uh, the buyers uh, so that we know how to calculate um, our shipping uh, costs uh, to each person. All right, so my next lot is uh, a pair of items that uh, could have gone, should have gone into my Disney, uh, my Disney specialty sale, but I didn't pick them up until after the Disney sale. So there are two uh, items that are part of the Gourmet Mickey line, which admittedly I don't think is super old. Um, I couldn't really find dates on this. It definitely is past 85 because it has the new Disney logo, not the Disney old uh, Disney Walt Disney Productions. Um, but I originally had picked this one up because it's Treasure Craft. And someday I am going to get George to do a deep dive with me where he was going, where he is going to talk about literally the item, the uh, collection that he wrote the book on, George the Antique Nomad wrote the book on Treasure Craft. So he will be doing one of my deep dives uh, on Treasure Craft someday. Um, but for now I had picked this up and probably could have kept, kept it for the sale or kept it for the uh, deep dive, but he has plenty of examples. But then I came across this picture, which is also from the Gourmet Mickey line. So you've got this one, which is Gourmet Mickey with both Mickey and Minnie on it, Mickey and the chef hat. And this one is simply stamped with the treasure craft. This one has the Gourmet Mickey just with Mickey. There's no Minnie. Uh, and this one is not um, treasure craft, or I'm assuming it's not treasure craft. It's made in Thailand, uh, but you can see it has the more contemporary logo. So this ends up being a two piece lot of the Mickey and Minnie heart, uh, trivet, of uh, from Gourmet Mickey plus the Gourmet Mickey, uh, picture. And you can, as you can see, compared to my head, it's a pretty decent sized, uh, picture. So you get the two pieces, uh, as a lot, you get them for $15 for the Gourmet Mickey picture and trivet. $15 by giving me number 86. $15, 86 for the two Disney pieces. Well, I want to thank Judy Scalett. I hope I'm pronouncing your name right for your bid on the perfume. You got the perfume number 20 for $15. And my next item, I thought since we're on the boudoir trek, we'll do a little piece of jewelry here. This is raw turquoise, and I'm going to see if I can, there we go, it'll come in a little better. This is raw turquoise, it's from the southwest, this isn't the greenish turquoise that you see that's from Asia, this is actually from our continent, and for, well, I shouldn't say our continent, we have viewers from all over the world, but it's from the continent I'm currently on, and this piece is one that was hand strung and it's raw in that it hasn't been polished into any sort of thing. So each piece is individual and unique and it has a barrel clasp. And what a barrel clasp tells us, and that's this little clasp here where you unscrew it like so. And what that tells us is that this was done in the 1960s or possibly early 70s when these clasps were the way that things were done. And I like to show you that if it can fit around my big old Adam's apple, that it'll fit to the average person who would die, be buying this. It's 14 inches total length, which is how you measure these things. You would measure it end to end, even though you don't wear it that way. The raw turquoise necklace is going to be $15. And it is number seven, $15 for number seven, the turquoise choker. Sammy, Unique Finds won the wonderful vintage Christmas advertisement from 1949. So Sammy, please make sure that you give me an email and I will get that shipped out to you. Now, the next item I have is just absolutely adorable. He is so cute. He is a little Japan mouse. He's only two inches tall and he would be fabulous in any display. And doesn't he look mischievous? He kind of looks like, hmm, I'm about to get into some mischief. 
and he is just fabulous. Now he has no chips or cracks. He does have a little bit of crazing, some craze in the glaze there, but he's just wonderful. He has got hand painted, uh, cold painted eyes there and a cold painted mouth and he has no issues on the glaze. Now he does have a little bit of a flaw that I believe was in the, the way that he was made right there, but he has no chips or cracks from anybody else. And you can see that little dot there, but not affecting him at all. He is still absolutely beautiful for a display. So darling. And you can see his Japan mark on the bottom. So this little two inch tall mouse fella can be yours. He wants to come live with you and start mischief at your own house. He can be yours for $5. The little mouse fella is $5 and you can have him by giving me number 75, 75 for Mr. Mouse. That was cute. All right, guys, up next, we have a piece of carnival glass for you. So big, you can't see my face. It's a smoke gray iridescent and it's in the fruit pattern with the ruffled edge. It's a pioneer bowl. Okay. Smoke gray iridescent carnival glass fruit pattern. Set that down so I don't drop it. And that is $10. $10 by giving me number 32. All right. A thank you goes to Blue, Fl Blue Flamingo Mercantile. So thanks, Lori, uh, for picking up the Disney picture and the uh, Mickey Trivet. Uh, so next, when we get that deep dive with George, you'll have your own piece of treasure craft that you can compare and contrast all the stuff that he talks about. Uh, the next item I'm going to be showing, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, a little bit on Facebook, I ta I've talked about uh, my adventures into physical uh, locations of booths at some antique malls and vintage malls locally. Unfortunately, one of them, I've made the decision to leave. And as a result, I'm bringing out about 150 items that uh, were sitting there for selling. I'm going to bring them into my other store, other booth and into my live sales. And this is one of those items. So this is a set of three uh, Asian uh, plates. See if I can hold them in a way that you shows what the way they go up. They are all in uh, Andrea by Sadek. I used to say Sadiq, and then I listened to George, and he corrected me, and I now know the error of my ways, and it is Sadek. And uh, the third one. So all three of them are identical in size, and they're all stamped the An Andrea by Sadek. They all have the original foil label, uh, and then also a number uh, that is stamped on each one of them. And interestingly enough, it's the same number on the back, the G1221. I was not able to figure out what exactly that meant, if that was just the shape of the plate, or if that means that these three were actually designed all in the same pattern, uh, because they all just have the label on the back. But it is the set of three. There is, uh, the, they have the gold accents on them, but only this one with the yellow florals has the raised, uh, and then this is where everyone debates the moriage versus moriagi versus moriage. Um, this, you can, as you rub across it, you can feel it is slightly raised. Uh, so this one actually has a slightly different design, but again, they all are designed to go together. So uh, because I'm not paying commissions and rent and everything on the booth, I was able to lower the prices. So you get the entire set of three, you get all three plates for only eight bucks. Uh, so $8 for the three Andrea by Sadek Japanese plates by giving me number 96. 96, $8 for the three plates. Well, Patrick, I just, uh, I forgot after the last round, but I want to give you a thank you for the nod on the treasure craft. And you were right, that gourmet Mickey that uh, somebody got to uh, have you send them in the mail is from the late 1980s because treasure craft got, uh, they started making stuff for the theme parks in the 70s and that's how they got involved with Disney. Um, the winner of, I guess I shouldn't say winner, the, the first person to respond, and the person who will be getting the turquoise choker was Laura Ann. It's number seven for $15, Laura Ann. So please send an email. And Laura Bemos, I noticed in the comments, was correct when she said that she believes that bright blue where it's really pure without a lot of impurities is Kingman turquoise. So that's what you're getting. 
And this is sort of the trifecta, my last boudoir item for the knife. But I've noticed in life sales that compacts seem to be very, let me try to get myself in focus there. There we, there we go. Well, let's get the compact in focus anyway. That's what we really care about. Um, here is a compact from about 1970. It is an American made. It does not have a maker name on it. This is right about the time that the compacts that you would buy in the store start to disappear and cheap plastic throwaway ones replace them. And this one was never used, which I thought was really neat. It's got an interesting mid-century floral design. You see the mirror in there. And then when you open this up, the puff is brand new. It's never had any powder in it. So if you wanted to use this, it is clean as a whistle. One thing I'll show you is when you click these and they're old, you really want to press the button in before you shut it. It's better for it. You don't wear it out as fast. And so anyhow, here is the compact. And I just thought it was a really fun design. It is priced at $20. And it is number 18, the compact $20 for number 18. Congratulations to Judy Scala. You won my last item. Okay, so who's ready for some uranium? I have a uranium sherbet here. This is in the optic style. It's federal glass. You can see the F and the shield on the bottom. That is federal's logo. Oops, I've got it upside down there. And this has no chips or cracks on it. It is a molded piece of glass. You can see the seam right there, but this glows. And I have been putting it by my window at night getting ready for the live sale. And believe it or not, it glows just from the light by the moon. So this thing is gonna be awesome in your house. It would be great with shiny brights in it for Christmas time. Those small red shiny brights would be just fabulous. You could do anything you wanted with it, even eat sherbet or ice cream out of it. So here's the glow. Look at this thing. It must have a ton of uranium and other properties in it. This is just fabulous and they used uranium as a way to color glass way, way back when, because it made a great color for glass, as you can see here. So this is a federal uranium sherbet in the optic style, and you can get it for $6, $6 for the federal sherbet glass by giving me number 72, 72 for the glass sherbet. Dottie Lynn, I don't show that you're muted, but I'm not hearing you. Now we gotta show you're muted. We're kind of breaking up a little bit. So I think it's affecting your audio. Is anyone else having problems with her or is it just me? Yeah, I'm afraid I'm not hearing her either, Patrick. Okay. I don't hear Dottie Lynn. I'm so sorry, Dottie Lynn. I know Dottie was having internet in in issues before she started. Let's see if we can get her set up here. Thank you. That this was originally wood. There you go. But then I saw the India made an India stick. So it's actually just a very heavy plastic, but it was a nice drink. No, I'm not, I'm not muted. Let me try. Yeah, I took it off again just to see. Can you? Hear me now? I think now her audio is reversed like 10 or 15 seconds out of sync. I hear a little bit of a delay. Okay. Okay, I apologize. I'm going to kick Dottie out really quick and have her uh, dial back in. And then I'll give her two two turns. Right, hold on. 
and that seemed really cruel. I actually literally got a message that says, kick her out. I'm like, yes. So hopefully we'll get Dottie to come back. So I apologize, but that's what you get for the live screen streams. Yeah, deal with live technology. Uh, so thank you goes to Jen Bootsy uh, for picking up uh, my last uh, lot, the set of three uh, Andrea by Sedek uh, Asian style plates. Uh, the next item that I have is also something, if you followed me on Instagram, you would have seen. It is a little vintage, I want to say they're simply just called smokers. I mean, they're kind of related to the nutcrackers, but they are technically smokers. And the way he is designed, he sits, you know, like this normally, but um, you take off his legs and he has a little platform on there that you place the little smoking, I can't remember what it was called, a, not a puerile, a pin, pineal, something that you set on there, you set it on fire and then blow it out and it'll smoke. Then you put the top of the nutcracker back on, the top of the smoker back on. And if you look really closely, you can see he has a hole in his mouth. So as the smoke rises, it actually will then go out of his mouth. So it is a smoker. So they're made, you know, in the same style as a nutcracker. This one happens to be the gingerbread seller. It is a popular design from Germany. This one does still come with its original box. Uh, the age of it, I was trying to really chase it down, assuming that this box is original and I'm a, there's no reason to believe it's not. It does have recycling symbols on it, but I did look up specifically that Der Grunia Punkt or Pinnacht that is that was a company that started packaging recycled packaging in 1993 so it's you know still probably vintage but it's probably 90s vintage so it's not quite as old as all the other pieces but it's just got some really cool pieces to it you know he's got the little holder those little pieces uh the, the gingerbread the heart if you ever go to a, a chris kindle mark you know you see those types of things uh, it's, you know, legit, it's a gingerbread. It's a le legitimately the styles uh, that they would be selling. So not a nutcracker, but a smoker and in its original packaging. And it does still have the original price from Dold Exquisite. Uh, I did do some research on that. I really wasn't able to find anything uh, that would help date it. So I think the best is the fact that it's in recycled packaging. So you're probably looking around 20 to 30 years old. Uh, it is available. It's in great condition and it is available for $12 for the smoker. So $12 for the German gingerbread smoker. And you can get him by giving me number 87. And I'm going to bring uh, Dottie back in and let her do the item. See if we can get her to do that last item that we had problems with. Can Dottie hear us? Uh-oh. I can't hear Dottie Lynn. I'm so sorry, Dottie. Yeah, I'm sorry, Dottie. I'm not happy. I can't hear you either. Oh, she left again. Okay, so we will just jump straight over to George. Well, you were also helpful the last time I had these problems, so we'll work her back in as soon as we can get uh, Dottie Lynn back with us. I want to let Randy Heilman know that you are the proud new owner of the compact. So number 18, the $20 compact is going to Randy Heilman. Now, this next item, I thought about this and I thought, well, if, um, if Warhol could talk about Campbell two tins, well, so can I. And here's one now. And you're thinking, why is he showing us a can of soup? Why in the world would he think we would be interested in buying a can of soup? Well, this is not an ordinary can of soup. This came from the state sale I was doing in Florida. At some point, I'll put out the video where I find this. I was very excited. You see it has the five food groups on it, which, of course, we don't believe in the five food groups anymore. And you see it does not have the barcode that you would expect. Barcodes came out in the early, 19, early to mid-1970s. But this looks like a modern can of soup. And I saw it sitting on the counter and I thought, okay, well, that's very strange. Uh, why would this be sitting out on the counter instead of with the other food? And then I picked it up and it was really heavy and yet it felt empty. And I realized it is a safe. So I have a Geraldo moment where in my video at the estate sale that will be coming out eventually, I show me finding this, getting really excited, and oh, we're gonna have the big reveal, and we open it up, and wah, wah, there is nothing in it. 
However, these cam safes, and there were a bunch of different products in that time that were made, are actually a really cool thing because it's a great place to keep your rings, your jewelry, stuff you might be using around the kitchen where nobody knows it's actually sitting there. It's kind of like the books on the shelf that are hollow and it turns out that you have your wallet and passport in it. Well, this is made for the same reason. So I thought it was cool. They are collectible. And this one is $7 and it is number 25, the Campbell's Soup Can. So you get an empty can of soup for $7, number 25. Melissa Roy, you got the uranium glass sherbet. Thank you so much. Congratulations. That's going to look great in your displays. And George, that last item was really fun. I've never seen a can of soup that's also a bank. So awesome. Now, the next item I have is very near and dear to my heart because I love my advertising tins. And this one's really fun. This is Union Leader Smoking Tobacco. I think the graphics on this are just fabulous. And I love that it's kind of rusted and aged. I think that adds to its character. Now what's neat about this is it still has some of its tax seal stamp on the side right there. And you can actually tell who made this tin. So a lot of companies made the tins and then they would go someplace else to get the product and the design. And this is made by the Federal Tin Corporation. You can see that down on the bottom. It's very tiny, but it is marked. Not all of them are marked, so it's kind of fun to know who made these. And I would say this is from around 1950, 1960 or so, just dating by the graphics and the age on it. And I've seen people do a variety of fun things with these. Of course, these are great in a display if you have a live uh, uh, party for 4th of July. This would be great because it has the eagle on it. So you could put that in your display for 4th of July, but also people store things in these because it does open up. And I have seen people in the military use these to store items they don't want to get broken, like a iPod or a small cell phone or something like that, or even earbuds. So you can do many things with these fabulous little tins right in the display. And if you want to get started into smoking and advertising, this is a fabulous uh, collection to start these little smoking tins. So you can have the Union Leader Smoking Tobacco Tin, and it does have rust, as I did mention, but I'll show it again quickly so that you do know that it's there. But this is a fabulous tin, and you can have this Union Leader Tin for only $5 by giving me the number 53, $5.53 for the advertising tin. All right, I, I had Dottie Lynn momentarily and then I just lost her again. So hopefully she'll come back and uh, we'll try and get caught up uh, so we don't, she doesn't fall too far behind in the sales. Uh, internet definitely can be our friend and it can be our foe. And oh, she's, I, if I rambled enough, I figured she'd come back. So Dottie is back. So let me add her back to the screen and see if we can hear Dottie. Oh my. Hey, oh, I'm back. I've been here the whole time. Katie was frozen on my end and I could hear her talking, but her lips were not moving. Very frustrating. As I was saying, this was made in India. It's a hard plastic, very boho, nice trinket dish, 12 inches long. All right, so the price for that is $5 and that's number 33. I'm gonna go fast because it's just not Did you and want you me want to, to do two Patrick? Yeah, yeah, go ahead and do one more and that'll get you caught up. Big wicker basket here. It's got the divided areas. I think this is perfect for the kitchen. You can put your utensils in it, your napkins. You can use it in the bathroom. It's nice, very easy, light to ship. And that is $7. $7. By giving me number 27. Okay, the audio slip split from the image from me. So hopefully you guys were seeing it because then there's another delay before you see it. So hopefully you were able to hear her numbers. Um, 
If not, Nathaniel, if you can let us know in the chat and we can remind it the next time. Uh, I could hear it, but I guess the, the she started showing the number, but I could still hear her talking about the item. So hopefully you guys heard it. Um, but catching up on my items, the last one was the uh, vintage Christmas smoker and that went to Blue Flamingo Mercantile. So uh, congratulations again, Lori, for picking that up. Appreciate uh, the purchase. Uh, next item, if you're used to my uh, channel and my sales, you'll always find some pottery. Uh, definitely something that I, I really tend toward, pottery, glass, porcelain, uh, and definitely it shows up in my sale. This is a piece, again, that I picked up on my vacation out to Pennsylvania and DC. Picked this up while uh, visiting Tim at Over the Years. Uh, this was from one of his favorite uh, locations. And it's just this great piece of three-dimensional floral pottery kind of has that boho coloring of that mustard that 70s mustard yellow color it's coming across pretty much true to the color that you i i see it live uh you've got the glaze in the back uh going into the uh leaves but then you can see that the actual background is still just the raw pottery it is signed I couldn't find anything uh, tracking down that signature. So I think this is really just a studio piece or you know, maybe even a student piece. There is a little bit of a scuff on the pottery that I'm not sure you'll be able to, you might be able to buff that off. I tried to rub it just with my finger and I really wasn't sure the best way to deal with that. Um, but you know, once you hang it, you know, that's actually something you can't tell, but I always like to disclose uh, something like that. So no chips, there's no, there's no pottery missing. It literally just looks like something rubbed against it. So you might be able to find something to kind of buff that out. And the back is just flat and it has the little leather, um, yeah, the little leather cord to be able to hang it. So it is a simple oval wall pottery plaque. You can have that for $9, $9 for the floral plaque. $9 by giving me number 79. Okay, let's get live again. This uh, last piece, the Campbell's Soup Bank Safe, is going to KCATX. So, uh, and I think she knows it because I saw the comments. So, thank you very much for that. Uh, this next piece came out of a house in Bellevue, Washington. And Bellevue is a rather wealthy enclave outside of Seattle where a lot of computer people live. And they had this very nice, from their family, red transferware cup and saucer. And of course, we see red transferware, but look how the detail is all the way into the bottom. Then when we flip the back, you notice it says WAA, and you can't really read it, but Racine is the pattern, I believe. And you think, well, it doesn't say the country of origin. That's because this is quite old. This dates to about 1875, and this is English, and the W.A. Adderley Company is the maker of this little redware, uh, red transferware teacup and saucer. It has an Orientalist design, and I don't know if that's actually PC to say now, but that's how it's been described in antique parlance for years. The English imported most of their porcelain from China up until the late 1700s. And when they started making their own, they literally took the tea wrappers that they were getting in the import boxes and used those as the basis for the designs. And so these uh, designs with the uh, trees and scenes that seem very exotic to them became very popular. Um, this one's very cute. It's in great shape, no chips, cracks, or blemishes. And again, it's 150 years old practically now. And this little piece, the cup and saucer is $8 and it is number 15, $8 for the William A. Adderley cup and saucer. The next item I have this evening is very timely. Thanksgiving is right around the corner. And I thought this little guy was just adorable and he'd be perfect in your Thanksgiving display. Great uh, on your Thanksgiving table. You could put anything you wanted in this, including uh, plants or air plants as we all do now. Even cheese would be great in this. Cheese sticks coming out of him. Oh yeah, that would be great snack before your Thanksgiving meal. So I have this little turkey here. Now he is marked USA on the bottom. And it's interesting because I do not know who made this. I have looked this up and his colors are sort of unique. When you look up turkey planters, you find a lot of them with a darker red. And this guy has more of a, 
kind of a pinkish red with a blue glaze and a beautiful brown color. So I asked several friends here in our YouTube community and everybody had something different. So some people thought that he was American Bisque. I got some votes for Hull, H-U-L-L. -L. Some people said that he was Shawnee or Ro Royal Copley. And I don't know what he is, but he is fabulous nonetheless. He's a planter, but again, be creative. Do anything you want with this. Stick some napkins out of the back. Put an air plant in it. Just make it part of your Thanksgiving display. He has no chips or cracks on him where you look around. There's no chips or cracks on him at all. Of course, there is a little crazing, but that's expected with age. And I think crazing just adds to their wonderful character. So this little turkey planter can come home with you and be part of your Thanksgiving this year for only $15 by giving me the number 74. $15 number 74 for the USA Pottery Turkey Planter. Unfortunately, it looks like we've got a problem again. All right, well, we'll jump back to me. So I apologize, we lost uh, Dottie Lynn again. Um, so first I, I will say thanks to Jen Bootsy for picking up the pottery plaque, but in following in the chat, it looks like Jen would like to give up her uh, pole position and give that to Michelle from Comfy Cozy Living. So if Michelle uh, wants to do that, um, trying to follow the chat at the same time. Uh, so if you, if Michelle wants to, wants to take that on, uh, Jen is giving that over to you, Michelle. So if you want to put the uh, comment in the chat, if you still want it, uh, you were second in line. And if Jen is giving up her position, you can take it. Uh, so that was the floral uh, pottery plaque uh, number 79 for $9. Uh, my next item, and I'm just, I was looking at a comment in the chat and if I see, uh, Dottie Lynn come back, we may do that. We may lose her audio, but we may have her just hold up the item as closely to the camera as she can and then showcase the number. Um, we won't be able to hear the audio to go with it. So I, I hesitate, but it's worth a try because this was her first official sale and I feel bad that uh, she's, getting, she's having technical problems, um, but it's happened to all of us. Um, there was one sale that I was selling things blind. I couldn't see a thing. So anyway, uh, this goes back. The next item I've got is another uh, pair of items. This is again, an item that I had had in the booth that I'm shutting down. And so what I decided to do originally, these were listed separately or I had them selling separately. I decided to package them together into a lot uh, for this evening. And so what they are is this little, um, it's a little large for a condiment bowl, um, but it is a, a handled three cup bowl that you would either, I would maybe you put the pickles and or fruits or things in there. Uh, it is a little bit more summery, so we're not exactly fall, following the uh, autumnal season right now. Maybe that's why I didn't sell in my booth. Um, but it's just, it's a beautiful piece. And what I find interesting about it is it is stamped as a piece from Pier One. So we're not dealing with, you know, huge era vintage but now collectible because Pier One does not exist. So this is, again, it's the individual bowls are kind of cabbage leaf shaped and they've got the little tips coming off of them. It's, it does follow a little bit. I mean, there were, this would not be a poor spout because you dump everything else. So this is really just designed to be a tabletop tray. You see there's a little bit of an ombre effect on the sides. You've got the ladybugs on the inside. So it's just a cute little piece. And then this, I originally had been selling separately. It can be an underplate in the sense that it does fit on here very nicely, but I don't think this needs an underplate. I think this is really just designed to be its own serving piece. So it's just a very large leaf, again, in the same shape, same with the, the ladybug on it, also marked from Pure One. 
Uh, so what I decided to do to mark the price down a little bit was what I had been selling this for. You're not going to buy this and you're going to get this for free. So you've got the two pieces. Uh, you can pick up uh, the two summer ladybug uh, greenery pieces. Pair, the pair of them you have for $25. So $25 for the two uh, serving pieces by giving me number 91. $25, number 91 for the uh, ladybug leaves. Unfortunately, she has not come back yet. Okay, well then we'll just uh, move along and hopefully she'll get back in and we'll give her some extra chances. The buyer of the English antique cup and saucer is Tippy Winks Vintage, and I know you have another item from me, so we'll do a combined shipping on those for you. And my next item is something that I have had for literally less than two hours. I picked up some things from a consigner today and she had this. This was meant for her when she was a little girl. When she was born, she was supposed to be put in this little, it's like a little coat. And then inside there is another piece. These have never been out of the box. Apparently her mother, when she found out that uh, when she had her and it was a girl, decided I'm not doing yellow, I'm doing all pink. So her mother never used this. And it's got the little piece here that you put the baby in that zips up. So it's a nice warm thing. It has never been used. It would be fun maybe for a an upcoming arrival in the family or perhaps if you're a doll collector it might be something to dress up a large baby doll in and it's just really sweet it's got the original box you can tell from these colors and this kind of happy pastel and the graphics that this is from about 1965 which is when the gal i got it from today uh, was born so it's definitely vintage 55 years old never been used and this little baby set is going to be $17, and it is number 11, $17 for the baby set. Okay, Jamie at Mid-Century Wasted got the turkey planter, so congratulations, Jamie. Mr. Turkey is coming to California. Dottie Lynn, I don't know if you were still watching, but please do not feel badly about your internet issues. I was on a live last Friday and had a terrible time. My internet cut out and no one could hear or see me. So it is okay. It happens to all of us. Okay, so this item got a lot of uh, comments when I showed it the other day on my live preview, and I thought this is really fun. This is a Pyrex jar, and it is an apothecary or chemist jar. It is significantly older because it has the glass stopper, and the mold seam on it goes right below the lip here, so it doesn't go through the top or the neck of the bottle. So usually when you see those mold seams that go to right here on old bottles and jars. According to my bottle book, that means that they are older than most jars that you find. And it does have this really beautiful heavy glass stopper. It is marked Pyrex. It is number 29 with an S and a T on the lid. It is also embossed on the bottom with the word Pyrex, regular US patent off, made in the USA, D number six. There are no issues on this apothecary jar here at all, and it is just fabulous. You can do a variety of things with these because they are clear. They're great in an industrial display. I have a bunch of these, but they're also fun at Halloween. I filled a couple of these with candy corn this year. I also put some fun eyeballs and you know fake eyeballs and different things in it for your halloween display you could do a whole witch's brew station with these with all kinds of different items inside or just display these all year round and fill them with candy or different things that you like really nice in the display because it is clear again no chips or cracks on this pyrex jar wonderful apothecary chemist jar you can have the jar for five dollars by giving me the number 52, 52 for the Pyrex glass chemist jar. And it does measure four and three quarter inches tall. All right, if you were following along in the chat, uh, apologies to Dottie Lynn, she is bowing out. Um, 
she has internet. She was able to do other things while she was being uh, while she was disconnected from us. Uh, so it might be something with her connection to StreamYard. I know I have issues with working directly in YouTube. So it's you know technology is great until it's not. So I'm leaving her information scrolling across the bottom because I've asked her to go ahead and post her individual items that she had for the rest of the sale. She'll post them onto Instagram. So if you were interested in supporting Dottie Lynn in her first live sale, you can still do so by going to Instagram and finding her items there. Uh, for my last item, uh, the Ladybug set went to Angela Delaney. So thank you, Angela, for picking that up. You might think you might be a new name to me uh, or apologize if I've forgotten you. But just, again, if you are new uh, to any of the sellers, make sure you send them your information uh, so we can calculate shipping and get that to you. Uh, so my next item is something I'm going to ask my moderators to be on the lookout for shutting down anything that should not be happening in the chat because I'm not trying to get political in any way. This is a non-political show. Um, but what I'm about to show is probably going to have reactions because I had purchased a collection of swizzle sticks to support one of the uh, deep dives that I did. And in that collection of swizzle sticks I picked up was a Trump Plaza swizzle stick. So it's the Trump Plaza, the Broadway buffet, uh, it's a little swizzle stick. Uh, it's got the curved end to it. Uh, so I've got the Trump swizzle stick drawing to counterpoint that with a uh, Wade Whimsy. Uh, this is one of the Wade Whimsies that I had uh, from one of my uh, bargain bins. It is a Wade Whimsy of the White House, still sealed in the original plastic uh, from Wade Whimsy. So you've got the White House. So you're getting the Trump um, swizzle stick. You can make a celebr celebratory drink with it, or you can set it on fire and put it into a video. I don't care. Um, but you also get the little um, the little White House, which hopefully we can all you know respect and represent. And I just felt this this little sticker that I had picked up for the live sale for the fundraiser, little dachshund that just says America. Um, I kind of felt that was rather Trump-like. So I'm doing this little set of the dachshund sticker, the Trump swizzle stick, you do whatever with you choose, and the Wade Whimsy. I am selling the entire set for only six bucks. So basically you're buying the Wade Whimsy and get the other stuff for free. So $6 for the Wade Whimsy and the swizzle stick and the sticker, $6 by giving me number 90. Well, regardless of how you feel about politics, political stuff always ends up being collectible. So that's a good buy for somebody. Uh, meanwhile, on to happier notions. Uh, after the election, we get to go into Christmas. And this little guy here would be a fun thing for you to have for Christmas. This is a nice little elf. If Misty is still out there watching, I just want to point out this is not a clown. This is an elf. No clowns, I promise. Um, Anyway, this is a very cute piece of late 1940s or early 1950s embroidery. Now, originally, it was probably done as a gift linen. and it's very clean. It doesn't seem to have any damage, holes, or stains. I don't think it was used. But it would be big enough that if you wanted to wrap it around the base of a small Christmas tree, it might be a fun thing to use for that as well. So I thought that this was a neat little piece and that somebody would really enjoy having it. It is... A, I'm going to call it a holiday linen because, you know, nowadays nobody waits for Christmas to put things out as early as, you know, in the store's Halloween for Christmas season. So we'll just say it's a holiday linen. The little guy is making it for it. It is $6 and it is number nine. Maria at MD Nesting 2, you got the fabulous apothecary jar. You're going to have to post it on Instagram and share with us what you decided to do with it because it's really cool. So the next item I have is, of course, a vinyl because I can't be vintage in vinyl without sharing some records. Now, I am a huge Cordats fan. They are a classic group, and I have a record that is fun. This is the very best of the Cordats. This is a 33 and a third which is really nice because some of the Cordats uh, albums are on 78s, which is a little harder to play these days. And I love this. This has all of their hit songs on it in perfect condition on no issues on the jacket whatsoever. And it is an excellent minus shape. There is a little bit of light surface scratching 
on one side of the record, but very minimal, just uh, some dust, but that's about it. I mean, it plays perfectly with no loud clicks or pops. So this has Mr. Sandman, Eddie My Love, Teenage Good Night, Lollipop, The Wedding, Zorro, Lay Down Your Arms, Soft Sands, Lonely Lips, Far Away Star, A Girl's Work Is Never Done, Never On A Sunday, and The Wedding. Great record here by the Cordats. Fabulous to get all of their hits if you love the Cordats as much as I do. Great if you want to start a vintage music collection. And you can get this Cordats record in excellent minus shape for only $10 by giving me number 71. 71 for the Cordats LP. All right, and I will thank uh, my last item, the Trump uh, swizzle stick and the White House Wade was uh, went to empty nesting too. So congratulations for that. Uh, also, it appears, I do believe the Dottie Lynn's technical problems were beyond anybody's control, uh, but there's a couple mentions of lagging and focus issues. Uh, definitely re refresh if you can, because uh, sometimes that can help. Um, and I, you know, I'm I'm hoping my connection is strong enough. I'm hearing everyone fine. Uh, so if you're not hearing all of us, I do apologize. And again, sometimes it is the internet, sometimes it's Streamyard, and we're doing we do the best we can. So appreciate. And we just, you know, nothing any of us have is like we're giving away the you know a rare document or anything. So we're just here to have fun. So hopefully you're enjoying it and can pick up some pieces along the way. Uh, so again, thanks for empty nesting, empty nesting too. Uh, my next item is uh, another piece that came out of my uh, booth. This is also reminiscent for the docs and fundraiser, but there is no doxy on this one. So this one is again, falling a little out of the season. So I don't tend, you know, if I find something cool, I just pick it up. I don't care what season it's for, but not everyone buys that way. So it didn't sell in my booth, um, but it is just a cool ceramic platter. Um, and you can see the individual dogs on here, I'm trying to see it so that I can see it too. And they've got palm trees in the background. So they are just, you know, there's some dogs hanging out on the beach. They got the beach ball or there, maybe the pool. And yeah, there's a little fish down there. So I'm assuming they're at the beach. Uh, this is a certified international piece, um, dishwasher and microwave safe, uh, stamped on the back. Uh, so again, probably not the, the oldest amount of age, but it's a large piece, a great uh, conversation piece for a party and would hold all kinds of snacks, cheese, any of those things that you need to have on display. And it's just a great looking piece. Um, so again, knock the price down a little bit since I'm not paying commission and I'm not paying uh, rent anymore. So I knocked it down to 14 bucks. So $14 for the doggy platter. And you can have that for giving me number 99, $99, dollars $14 for the doggy platter. Well, I need to do a little catch up because I did not mention that the winner of the baby set was number 11 for $17 with Jay Wonders. And then the holiday linen went to Michelle at Comfy Cozy Living. And I know that's perfect for her because when I met her, she talked all about her red 1950s kitchen. So that's going to be great. In the meanwhile, my next item this is an original out of i can show you the back first for the, the this is an original 1950s chenille bath mat and it doesn't have any wear spots it doesn't have any holes and yes i even put it through the washing and it's just fine because i wanted to make sure that it was nice and clean for whoever gets it tonight it has great color, a nice floral design, and pink is, well, coming back in style. So I thought this would be really nice. It's very soft. I have to admit that I had one like it on my floor for years and years and used it until it wore out. But I just think they're really cool, and they're much nicer than cold tile or linoleum four in the morning. And so this chenille mat is $19, and it is number Four. The chenille mat is $4, uh, is $19, number four. Okay, Christine at Side Street Market, you're going to be rocking out to the core debt. So thanks for picking up that album. Now, the next item I have is fabulous. This is from 1949. It is an advertisement and it is for Deep Freeze. And look at the graphics on this paper ad. This came from a National Geographic magazine. 
And this is just the quintessential 1950s woman. I mean, look at that graphic. This is just fantastic. So this is a deep freeze advertisement and says, it's a fact. Deep freeze really opened my eyes. Large capacities and lower prices. But I find that funny because it says that it's $424.50 and it holds 430 pounds worth of food, which is a lot. And it says it's deep freeze home freezer and it you can send for the valuable booklet, Homemaker's Manual. It's a 30 page booklet with suggestions on homemaking, better living. Send 10 cents in with your name, address to department G. 109 and you get the booklet or you could buy the deep freeze so this is a great advertisement and then on the back you get an ad for movado uh, clocks and watches with the wonderful graphic there of the moon you also get an ad for uh, chicago to los angeles with the little starbirds on the design there on the graphic and you also get an ad for dallas park apartments and suites and hot springs national park hotel in Arkansas and some advertisements you can write in. And so here's a little write-in card if you want to do that. But this is a fabulous graphic from 1949. Great deep freeze advertisement in a lovely blue color. And you can get this deep freeze magazine ad, perfect for a display or in a frame, for only $5 by giving me number 69. $69.5 for the fabulous deep freeze advertisement. That's a great piece. And a lot of people were pointing out in the in the chat, that was a lot of money for something back then. So that's uh, that's shocking. Uh, so congratulations on my last piece. The dog tray went to uh, Connie Cable. Uh, so congratulations for picking up the beach dogs. Uh, my next item is going a little bit older. Uh, this is a paper mache uh, piece that doesn't have any specific markings or dates on it, but there's a few things you can kind of tell from looking at it. First, it's a letter, uh, kind of a letter holder, uh, desktop organizer, desk valet. Uh, you've got the individual slots there. Uh, you can see it's a lacquered piece of paper mache. Um, but what I find interesting about it, if I hold it up so you're not seeing a glare, it has a look that to me has a little bit of an Asian motif of the individuals riding uh, the backs of the horses. However, they appear to be playing polo. So unless there is a East Asian variation of polo, which is entirely possible, and they're playing that, I'm thinking that this is one of the earlier pieces that the Eastern uh, manufacturers were producing for a Western market, but they hadn't quite mastered what the people were supposed to look like, or for that matter, even what the horses were supposed to look like. Um, so I do, again, I do believe there's some age to it. There's definitely some wear. You can see there's a couple of places where there's some scuffs. This was definitely used, um, as in, it's still a solid piece. You know, all of the edges and everything are there, but you can see there's a couple of chips and a couple of nicks to where the lacquer was. Uh, we were joking about this before I started. I've become known to be a little bit of a stickler for damage, not because things can't have damage, but that, you know, unless it's something special, I don't have typically don't carry it. This falls into that category. I thought this was pretty special. I thought this was very, very cool. I'd love to know a little bit more about the age. I don't think it's you know an antique yet. I'm thinking this is probably more of a 30s, 40s piece, maybe even 50s. Uh, George, uh, the antique nomad, might know a little bit more about it. I had never seen the style before, um, but again, the concept of just a a Western style letterbox, but just the way the individuals are painted, I just thought was super interesting. I uh, just have a, gave it a really naive look. And I think this is just going to be a really attractive piece, whether it's sitting on a desk or sitting in the background behind a vignette or holding, you know, some of the antique ads that you're getting from uh, Katie. So the uh, lacquer, uh, vintage lacquer box is 20 bucks. So $20 for the lacquerware, you can have that by giving me number 98, $20.98 for the piece of lacquer. Well, I think you're actually right uh, about a lot of what you said. I do believe that it is something made in the East for a Western market. It looks like it's lacquer over wood. The fact that it's a desk sorter, a lot of those were made in India. A lot of desk items were made in India in the 19th and early 20th centuries for the Western market. As far as polo, 
there is a total light being fleet in Afghanistan that they actually use the dead goat as the thing instead of the uh, ball. I know that's gross, but it's true. Uh, so I believe it was made for their domestic market. <laughs> in any event, um, Michelle at Comfy Cozy Living had a message uh, in the comments a while back saying I'm lagging and I guess she refreshed because she won the chenille bath mat as well. So Michelle, you are uh, the proud new owner of the chenille mat number four for $19. So if you folks are having trouble getting through, you might want to try refreshing as well. Um, for my next item here, this is a Lane Cedar chest. It's the very little version of the Lane Cedar chest. If you were a young woman in the 1930s and 40s particularly, you would have a, a trousseau. You would start to put things aside for when you were married someday, and you would generally put them in a large cedar chest, and Lane was the biggest maker of cedar chests and a lot of other furniture, and they wanted to get you in their stores. So what they would do is they would give these out as advertising, and every little local furniture store that had Lane Furniture in the line would have their name burned into the wood with uh, some sort of an, embo uh, an embossing tool. And then they have the Lane logo presented by, and then there's your local store. This one happens to be from Virginia, Minnesota. And it actually has some of the original hankies that were in it as well. And that's going to be part of this lot. And then on the bottom, which you usually don't see, but this one actually has information about how to take care of it most of the labels still there from the lane company one thing that um oh good thank you nathaniel i'm glad the static went away i kind of switched on to a different mic uh, setup so hopefully that'll help um one thing about this they were meant to lock the locking mechanism does not often work the locking mechanism does not seem to work in this one either which is kind of ironic because Lane some years ago settled a lawsuit. It was essentially a recall because their cedar chest locked so well that little children were getting locked in them and suffocating and not able to get out. So a um, little story about Lane there. This one will not have that problem. The little hankies in here, and I believe there are four or five, are all nice little Scandinavian patterns that were done by the grandmother of the woman who I'm uh, selling them for. They had a lot of linens that she made over the years, and I think there's six or eight of them. And they said they had so many that they'd like to just sell all of this as a lot, and so we are gonna keep it together as a lot. So this Lane Cedar box with the, sorry, I dropped one, with the little handkerchiefs in it, the entire lot is going to be available to someone for $16, and it is number one, Lane Cedar Chest with nice little lace, Scandinavian lace uh, needlepoint uh, handkerchiefs is number one for $16. Congratulations to Jamie and Mid-Century Wasted for getting that fabulous deep freeze ad. Jamie, that is going to look great with your mid-century modern displays and, of course, your Pyrex. That is just fabulous. Now, I've got my grandmother's scarf on again because we're going to do another brooch. And I love this. This is a very good size. This is three inches. It is a fabulous fat flower brooch. Say that five times fast. That's really hard. Flower brooch. It has a faux pearl in the middle. Really well made. Very heavy. Now it is unmarked and I can't find any marks on it. I've scoured it with a jeweler's loop and it's just not there. There is a little bit of wear on it. If you can see inside the flower petals there, there's a little bit of... Um, dark wear. I'm sure that can be cleaned up. It's just due to age, but this is fabulous. It's that nice kind of brushed gold color. It looks great with a scarf. So obviously the scarf doesn't go with my shirt here, but look at that brooch with a scarf like this. Wouldn't this just be a fabulous outfit in the black hat or a black shirt? I mean, this would just be great. You could get all dialed up for dinner or the theater. Now it has a lobster claw clasp on the back and this is a tiny bit loose. So you might need to take a screwdriver or get a new 
uh, rivet there and make this uh, a little more assured up, if that's a word. Uh, but other than that, this is just a fabulous, really nice three inch brooch. And you can have that brooch for $8 by giving me the number 63 for the unmarked flower brooch with the faux pearl. All right. So you mentioned I'm in the process of shutting down one of my locations and I'll be uh, combining into my second location. But the other thing I'm doing is moving things from that as well, because, you know, you live and learn. It's not Etsy. It's not eBay. It's not even a live sale. Some things sell, some things don't. And one of the things that I've noticed that is not selling in my booth are the vintage kitchen items. Uh, so I've decided to kind of rotate some of that out and bring them into the live sale and hopefully give you guys a good enough price that I can uh, process through. So this is a small scale, you know, again, it's like basically the size of my hand, a small scale uh, vintage Lipton Soup Lovers Guide. So you've got uh, some great graphics on the inside of this, some co old coupons. Uh, I think I found a date on this one initially. I want to say it was from the 50s. I want to say the coupon expired in 57. Uh, but now I, of course, forgot to write it down, so I don't remember exactly what it was. Uh, but you can see the individual graphics within that. So you've got one little booklet and then also a set of the vintage kitchen tins. So we've got a shilling marjoram tin, which actually still has marjoram in it, a Kroger rubbed sage tin, a shilling mace tin. I don't even know what mace is, um, but yeah, you know, right inside, you see it very clearly, it's mace um, with the metal closure on the top. And then this little herb, herb ox uh, tube of chicken bouillon cubes. So you get five items in the lot. So you get the little cube box, the three uh, vintage spice and herb tins, plus the Lipton, um, recipe book and i will say the the marjoram the sage and the sh then the mace all have things in them uh the bullion cubes are empty but the rest actually still have so i can only imagine how old those herbs are but you can get all five pieces the entire lots available for 10 bucks so ten dollars for those five pieces and you can have them for give me number 95. Okay, we're back, and the Wayne Senior chest is for Gina Marie, and I believe that you also have the damask cloth, so we'll try to combine those. I think we can manage. I obviously you like lemons and textiles, so I'm glad I have some for you. And in the vein of kitchen that Patrick got us started on, I have a Glass reamer from the 1930s. And yes, this is uranium glass. It does have enough uranium oxide that this glows very nicely. It has no chips or cracks. A lot of different companies made these. I'm not sure who the maker of this one was, but it's got the little handle that you can just pinch like this with your thumb. And it's got a little thumb grip built in. So they're actually very easy to use, which is nice. And, you know, people used to juice their own stuff and you'd put an orange or a grapefruit or something like this on and you'd have a nice little pure non-concentrate glass of juice in the morning at about the amount that we're actually supposed to be drinking of that stuff and so i know some people who are doing more healthy living now are buying these for that reason but most people who are buying these are buying these because they glow in the dark and that part's really fun and so this uranium glass 1930s reamer is $20, and it is number eight. Number eight, $20 for the uranium glass reamer. Congratulations to Auntie Christy. You got that beautiful brooch. I can't wait to see what you wear it with. It's just gorgeous. Now, I have some vintage Christmas here, and I saw this and thought it was super neat. You don't see these in working order. A lot of times the cords get damaged and they don't plug in and light up. And I am talking about vintage cellophane wreaths from around 1950. I have a cellophane wreath here with the working uh, bulb. It does light up. This is a green bulb. It works beautifully. It is in this gorgeous gold color and it has a string here on the top so you can hang it. The string is still attached. 
and the cord is in great shape. There are no chips, chips. This is not a piece of pottery. There are no issues with the cords. It, it doesn't have any cracks in it and it does still have the original plug. It's very sturdy. It's not wobbly. It's not coming loose, but of course you probably could replace that if you wanted to. And it has a wonderful little flower here. Some of the silver on the leaves are coming off a little bit. Of course, this is paper and it is older, probably from around 1950. So you're looking at something that has been around a while and it's amazing it survived. The cellophane is in pretty good shape. And this is just fabulous. You can put this on your door. If you have a, a metal door, you can get a magnet and hang it from the metal door. And, or you could use it in any one of your displays and of course plug it in. Now I wouldn't leave it on too long. These bulbs do get pretty hot and might catch fire. So only when you're home and watching it, that's just a little safety warning for me. But this is a great wreath, wonderful vintage Christmas, perfect in a display. Even if you don't plug it in, you can set it up. And of course, if you wanted to, you could retouch up the flowers with a little silver Sharpie and no one would be the wiser. But this is a wonderful, fabulous cellophane Christmas wreath. And you can have this vintage Christmas wreath from the 1950s for only $12 by giving me number 57. 57 for the Christmas cellophane wreath for $12. All right, and thank you to our Vagabond Trebles uh, for picking up the kitchen tin lot. Uh, congratulations for that. Again, I think you're new to me, so just don't forget to send an email uh, on the email along the bottom of the screen to letting me know where you're at so I can properly send you your invoice. Uh, following along uh, uh, George's reference of glass, I do not have uranium glass as the others had, uh, but I do have the piece of another piece of amber glass uh, like George had. So this is the Viking Epic line. It's the six petal design. Uh, it's another piece of amber glass and it's really, you know, a, a console bowl, candy compote, footed compote. It's a wider, uh, the wider version that has the six uh, petals on it, as well as the petals on the feet of the, uh, pressed into the feet of the bowl. So you've got the amber uh, piece of Viking you can get this piece for $14, $14 for the amber glass uh, compote by giving me number 77. Well, and amber is trending, so good time to have amber. That's great. I have another kitchen item. I This is another thing I just got this afternoon. I've had it. Well, I guess we've been on for almost two hours, so I guess I've had this for three hours. And this... Um, if you remember the Midnight Light of Paul Revere, well, he was a real person, and he was one of the first very well to do, very successful industrialists who just after the Revolutionary War, he had gotten up to the popular, and he was at a silversmith. And so his company, we still know as Revereware, and this particular Revereware piece is never been out of this box before. It's got the original paperwork with the tea kettle collection, and it is copper with a stainless steel inside liner so that it's, it will actually distribute heat well. And then the handles are brass so that they don't take heat up into the wooden handle. And I'm gonna take the piece out so you can see it. I had to unwrap this because it's actually not ever been out of this box before. So this is mint in box, but the date on the brochure is 1977. So this is a unused 15, uh, an unused uh, 1977 Revereware teapot. It is $15. It's not terribly heavy and it's got its box. So it should be pretty shippable. And it is number five, the Revere teapot, $15. Number five might be great with the winter coming or to keep humidity in the house. Oh, Jamie from Mid-Century Wasted picked up that fabulous cellophane Christmas wreath. For all of you, I have been following your messages in the chat. My phone is down. The chat is having issues on my phone, so I can't respond to you all in the comments, but I am seeing it on my computer, so have no fear. If you have any messages for me, I will get them. Now, the next item is fun because this is the first live show that I ever did was with Patrick at Trusty Huckster Mercantile, and I did a deep dive on typewriter ribbon tins. So I thought it would be fitting that I had a typewriter ribbon tin for the sale tonight. 
and you guys can start a great collection of typewriter ribbon tins. They're small, they're easy to ship. And this is a fabulous typewriter ribbon tin that is marked by the company that made the ribbon tin. And I think this is very cool. This is a Supreme typewriter ribbon tin. It has that fabulous round the world graphic on it. They're great for fall right now. We're in that great season of warm and cozy and this definitely has those colors. Now this is marked very tiny. I had to look at it more closely after my live yesterday because I mentioned to you all on that live that it wasn't marked, but it is marked decorated metal. Now decorated metal made a lot of the typewriter ribbon tens and this one is from 1950 or so just judging by the graphics and the fact that it was made by decorated metal. So that's really neat. Now there is a little bit of wear on this typewriter ribbon tin because it was well used. A lot of people would get these and use the ribbon out of them and then store them in their desk with other things inside of it, paper clips or use it in a workshop and put screws in it. So they have had a long life. Uh, now these were not made after the 1960s because they went away from these ribbon tins and started using plastic and paper. So this is really, really neat. On the back, it says it's noiseless, made in seven degrees of inking, order clean right ribbons by inkings. We recommend medium inking for all general work. And this is a ribbon tin that's in the half inch size. So that's a ribbon tin that is definitely older than the earlier one and one half inch ribbon size tins. And you can have this fabulous Supreme typewriter ribbon for only $4 by giving me number 55. $4 number 55 for the fabulous Supreme typewriter ribbon. Wow, I never find ribbon tins for only $4, so that was a good price. Uh, congratulations to Jen Bootsy for picking up the Viking Amber Glass Bowl. Uh, next item that I'm gonna be doing, I made a reference to this earlier in the evening. Uh, these mystery boxes have become very popular. Uh, I had fun doing my first couple when I had Fatbird Fines on my uh, on my group sales. They do these every night on their Friday flipping and sipping uh, evening. So tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Eastern, they do a Fatbird's Five. They sell five items and they usually, are, if not always, have a mystery box. And so we are doing the mystery boxes. These are similar to what we'll be giving away during the fundraiser. Uh, but I've got one tonight. Uh, so there's in this box, uh, there's a mix of items in here. Uh, don't let the box be deceptive. Uh, I'm selling the box for $15 and there's uh, at least, actually this one's a little bit more, uh, but there's, I'm always trying to put at least $30 worth of merchandise into them. Uh, so this one is a $15 mystery box and you can have my mystery box by giving me number 82. $15 for number 82. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh, there he is. Okay, just for a little drama there. Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> okay, here we go. So uh, I wanted to mention that the Revere Teapot also went to found again. So very good on that uh, that button there. And there was a question about number one, the Lane Cedar Chest with the hankies. They went to Gina Marie, not Jean Marie. So I'm sorry about that, Jean Marie, but they went to Gina Marie. Uh, there's two of you who have very similar sounding names, but um, they went to Gina. Um, yes, I do miss having Zeta to help me with the technology. You are correct, absolutely. Um, Meanwhile, a good thing that I'm getting something, and um, so we'll talk about the things I know. <laughs> uh, this is a Longaburger basket, and Longaburger is a company that a lot of us have heard of, and we're seeing these in thrifting, and the reason that we're seeing them there and not available new is that they quit producing, I believe, in 2013. A company said they were going to revive them, but that was before all of the stuff happened this year, and so that has not happened. Meanwhile, their headquarters building in Dresden, Ohio, you can see on the bottom, it's marked Dresden, Ohio, and this one's actually got a maker's signature because these were all hand woven. Uh, they had a really cool headquarters building that was shaped like a big basket, and they are going to turn that into a hotel, but, Again, that's on hold. So 
If you want longer burger, you've got to get it on the used market. This little piece is neat because it's a single handle. It's meant to hang on a wall, but it also has a hanger on the back that was mounted on it by the factory. So you can hang it more than one way and you can have the handle up just for decoration purposes. Uh, the quality is really good on these and that's why they were collectible. They were expensive new and they are not expensive tonight because this little one is only seven dollars and it is number three seven dollars for the longer burger basket okay so i'm going to follow along with patrick's theme of the mystery box and we'll be coming up with that in just a second but i want to give a shout out and thank you to i heart old things that won the fabulous typewriter ribbon 10 with the great uh, world graphic on it. Please be sure to email me with the email down below. I have not uh, communicated with you before other than in the chat. So make sure you email me with all of your information so I can get that shipped out. So I am going to be doing a mystery box of my own. This is the mystery box size you will be getting. It is an Amazon box size. And uh, oh, I thought it was marked on here, but you will be getting this size mystery box filled with all kinds of vintage treasures. And you can have this fabulous mystery box for only $15 by giving me the number 70. $15, number 70 for the mystery box. Okay, well, I think I'm being intimidated by your size. Um, okay, so the winner of my mystery box is Auntie Christy. So, um, you know, can't always judge a package by its size. Uh, so hope you enjoy uh, the mystery box, uh, Christy. My next item is some more pottery. Uh, this is another piece that I pulled from my booth and I'm offering them here. Originally, these were sold individually and now I'm combining them into the price of one. Um, I admittedly do not know the age of these pieces. They are marked uh, as Zool pottery, A-Z-U-L pottery from Villa Grove, Colorado. Um, I found other examples of their pieces and they all pretty much have the same look. Uh, kind of have an African style look to it. Uh, several, several of them have the animals on them. So this is the giraffe and you can kind of see it is a green color, kind of an avocado-y type green. And this style has the, uh, the little spoon that matches. It's got the same kind of texture to it that slides in uh, to the spoon. So that is a mug, you know, hot cocoa, stir it for the tea, whatever the spoon would be used for. Uh, the spoon itself does have a little hole on the bottom so you can hang it. And then the other piece is basically the same skin, you know, it's got that same brownish tone to it, but this is the mustard on the inside and just, and the mustard circles and no animal on this one. So this is just matches in the tone and the giraffe is only on the front, not on the back. So the two pieces, uh, the mug and the spoon plus the uh, double handled bowl, uh, you can get the pair of them. You get them for $9 and you get them by giving me number 84, $9 84 for the Azul pottery. I have to say, I think those are really cool. I like the texturing on them. And also, uh, maybe you've had a lot of really great stuff tonight, too. It's always something they sales, and it's always a little frustrating because I always do things that I would have to buy. But I guess that's for our folks out there viewing. And thank you for hanging in with us. We're on our panel that I was now. This is the second to the last, but I wanted to first say that Karen Gondelinger got the launch for her basket. So thank you very much for that. Uh, this second to last item here is this very cute, very sweet little disc doll. She is from the 1930s and on the back she says made in Japan. I really like the colors on this one. You know, we see these little things that were from the five and dime. They might cost a few pennies back then. I am actually selling this for a gal named Lois who is 89 years old now. This was first when she was a little girl. And I just love the scarf. I think she'd be very appropriate with Christmas coming. It's nice little decoration because she's all dressed up for winter. And she is going to be a whopping $9 for the little disc doll. It's, it's number six, $9 for number six. 
Barb at Winking Owl Antiques, you got the mystery box and that's perfect because I've got some wonderful train advertisements I wanna to send to Aaron. So you'll get all of that in the mystery box and you can give those to him. So the next item I have is fun and I love my glass and this is a milk glass top hat in the daisies and buttons pattern. That is a pattern that was copied after a Victorian pattern that was very popular then. And this is just beautiful. Now I've seen people talk about this being an ashtray and I really don't think so because there's no divots on the uh, rim of the top hat. I think it's a toothpick holder, but you guys could make this whatever you want. You can turn it upside down and put an air plant in it. You can put it this way in a display. You could make this 4th of July if you wanted to and do a Uncle Sam theme. You have lots of options with this beautiful top hat. Now, several companies did make the daisies and buttons uh, pattern. It's a very popular piece of pressed glass and you will find this in a lot of different uh, companies catalogs. So I think that this is Fenton. Now it is not marked Fenton, but I do believe that it is Fenton milk glass, daisies and buttons top hat. And this is just really fun for anything that you want to do with it. And this milk glass top hat is $10 and you can have the top hat $10 number 58 milk glass top hat 58 $10. All right. So my last item was the Azul Pottery pieces that went to Angela Marksbury. Uh, so thank you, Angela, for picking those up. Uh, if you uh, follow my channel or been to my channel before, you might have noticed that, again, as part of my one year anniversary, I did my first uh, collaboration challenge uh, that got issued on October 1st, and it was Trustees Vintage Firsts. And the idea was to showcase, you know, the first item in your collection, uh, whatever definition people use. And there were some really great interpretations uh, that people participated with. One of the things I showcased was the first item I ever sold is part of my resale business. And it was a set of uh, shell, cowrie shell napkin rings. I obviously do not have them anymore because I sold them, but because that was my first sale, there's always a, there's, I have a soft spot anytime I find them. So this next item I wanted to include in my live sale, because this is actually a nicer set than what I had. It is the cowrie shell, but it has been carved. So you can see that this little floral design on the top has actually been carved into the surface of the ring. And as I purchased them, I'm assuming that this all came as a set because each of the rings still had a napkin in them. And the napkin is a relatively small scale. I would say it's almost handkerchief size, but they were in the napkin rings. It has the scalloped edge, the little lace, uh, you know, open work detail in the bottom with the stitch work, machine made, definitely not handmade. Um, it still has the creases from how it was folded into the actual napkin ring. So this was never used. So these pieces, it comes as a set. There are six of the rings with the six napkins. So all of those go together. This was also with it. And I don't know if it was necessarily originally sold as part of the set. But again, if you know my channel, you know I have to have coasters in every sale. So this was my way of introducing these coasters. I picked them up at the same time. Again, assuming this was part of the set because it was a set of six. It does have the nice pale cream color with that the shell uh the, the shell uh, material on the on them with a little gold gold rim these six coasters are in great condition all of the cowrie shell napkin rings are in perfect condition there's no chips there's no cracks or damage in any way and all of the napkins are still in perfect condition so you get the six napkin rings the six napkins and the six shell coasters you get the entire set for 20 bucks so 20 dollars for the entire lot and you get that by giving me number 97. 97 for the cowrie shells and napkins and coasters. Well, this is it, our last round, and then there'll be a couple of follow-ups. Oh, yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. Uh, so, um, you, so anyway, George, if you have anything that didn't sell, you will, uh, the seller, this is our last item. So we can, if you have anything you want to highlight that did not sell, and then sell your last item. I meant to announce that. No, to be honest with you, I tried to keep things cheap because I knew the shipping would cut in. And so far, people have been very generous and everything has sold. So I'm just going to go right on to the very last piece. And this one, oh, the last item that uh, went, by the way, went to CLC. 
that was the bisque doll for nine dollars number six and i'm glad you got it because i know you've tried to bid on some other stuff tonight and i know sometimes you know it's hard with your internet so i'm glad it went through uh, my last piece is this little deer and i wanted to put this up it is a little bud vase it could also be used as a candle holder the thing that's really sweet about this is its background this is rosemead pottery got a very nice mark on the bottom in an ink stamp as most of their things did that says rosemead and rosemead was out of north dakota it was one of the few industrial things that were home goods made in north dakota there we go you can see it a little better uh, rosemead was started by a woman named laura taylor in the 30s a lot of universities started ceramics departments because they were trying to find jobs for people that they could do themselves because there weren't a lot of company jobs and the University of North Dakota had a good ceramics department and one of the graduates, Laura Taylor and her husband went on to found this pottery in North Dakota that ran for about 20 years in the 1940s and 50s. And one of the things that was really nice about them is the detailing, most of their pieces were molded even though she was a good pottery thrower, they did mainly molded work, but the details really nice all the way around. And if you see the way the colors are very soft and blended, they would use oxides that were under the glaze. So then when they fired it, the oxide would run together. So they didn't have harsh, defined areas of color. Everything kind of blended in. So it gives it a really nice effect. And there was a period of time where rosemead pottery sold for really good money to collectors. Nowadays, it doesn't sell for as much, mainly because a lot of it went into collections. And so it's not so easy to find a piece. I haven't had a piece in three or four years. But I found this one on my trip out to Seattle, and I'm selling it for $18, and it is number two. The Rosemead Deer is $18, number two. Okay, Tammy Tidbits Vintage Trinkets. You got this fabulous question mark Fenton milk glass top hat, because I'm not exactly sure it's Fenton, but it's fabulous. So congratulations. I'm so glad you picked that up. Now, uh, one item that didn't sell is this little pipe mixture tin. And I think that this is fabulous for a 4th of July display because it's red. But it's also great any time of the year. You could even put it in a Christmas display. It has the uh, guns there. And you could do like a little display of vintage advertisements for the toy guns and put this next to it because it's red. And then uh, zhuzh this up with a little green. It would just be great. And you can have this all year round. Great in an industrial setting anywhere you put this is going to be fabulous so this is a hickory pipe mixture tin i think to be about from 1950 1960 not exactly sure just dating by the graphics on this advertising tin not sure who made the tin and there is no marking on that but this is fabulous it is a john middleton fine tobacco since 1856 with this really cool graphic on the lid and then of course you've got the cool gun graphic on the front with the wheat and it says a genuine blend of suburb tobaccos decidedly different pleasantly mild and aromatic on the side in that really neat old font and then the lid has a cool graphic as well. Uh, John Middleton out of Philadelphia with uh, the graphics there, that cool writing. And it's got a little bit of age to it on the inside, but not terribly rusty. Uh, great, again, for a display. So you can have this hickory pipe mixture, 10, and oh my goodness, I lost the tag. Here it is. Hickory pipe mixture, 10 for $7. And you can have that by giving me the number Hang on with me, guys. Giving me the number 51 for the Hickory Mixture 10. If you would like that, 51, $7. Now, my last item is going to be more vintage Christmas. I love these ornament hanger boxes. And if you didn't get a chance the first lot, you will be able to hopefully pick some up now. So I have a lot of three vintage ornament boxes. This is 100 ornament hooks. This is a Germany box. It's very small, probably measures only an inch tall. Tree ornament hangers in fabulous shape. There is a little bit of a, a mark here, someone in mark 10. I'm assuming that's 10 cents from way back when, but it still has the ornament hooks in it. And it is a fabulous box. Love that old graphic there. And then you can also get the double glow 
ornament hangers. The little elf guy is just so cute. He's definitely up to something with his elf friends. And this is kind of neat because it's an advertisement on the side for Life Magazine, as seen in Life Magazine. And you've got that cool graphic on the back and great shape. There's just a little wear around the edges, but overall really great. Again, with the ornament hangers inside. And then the last bit you get is the clip-on heavy-duty ornament hangers, 50 pieces and giant. Now, this is newer. It's marked made in Taiwan, and it does have Taiwan, and it does have the barcode. So, again, probably from the 70s. Uh, but this is great just to use the ornament hooks out of it because they're much sturdier than the older ornament hooks. Uh, the newer ornament hooks, I mean. The newer ornament hooks are kind of flimsy. So, these are great. So, you get the lot uh hooks right here you can have the lot of the fabulous graphics for only seven dollars and you can have them by giving me number 65 number 65 for the fabulous ornament boxes all right so doing my last um really quick summary uh the last item actually didn't sell so the cowrie shell napkin rings, napkins, and coasters. Those were number 97, $20. Those did not sell. From the beginning of the show, I had this Mohawk uh, mustache uh, shaving mug. Uh, it has the mug itself plus the shaving brush uh, comes with it with the lion design on both sides of the shaving mug. That was number 83. It had been $12 or that is $12. So that is still available. And the last item still available is the uh, lacquer uh, desk set, um, possibly Persian, uh, that is, was number 98. So that's $20. So those are the uh, uh, items that I did not sell. And then my last item uh, happened to be one that I had showed in my preview for um, Instagram. So if you follow my sneak peeks on Instagram, you would have seen this little piece. So this is a small ewer uh, that again had been in my booth uh, that I had brought, brought home because it did not sell. Um, when I posted this, I actually put this in a haul video and a couple of people commented that they thought it was Brush McCoy. So it gave me some place to hunt, but I could never verify, I could never verify that this was Brush McCoy. I never found this shape and I never found that stencil and, and painted design. There's no markings or anything on it. Uh, you can see from the bottom, it does show some wear. So there definitely is some age to the piece, uh, but the gold is in fantastic shape. It's this squatty a uh, little or your uh, shape, uh, which I just think is super cute. Um, and so it's available here again, knocking the price down from what I had in my booth. So the little uh, acorn or pine cone, I guess, ewer is available for $10 and you can have that by giving me number 85, it's $10 85 for the little unmarked ewer. So I want to thank uh, all of my sellers. I again apologize for any everyone who uh, to Dottie Lynn who was unable to finish out the sale. I uh, apologize for running a little bit long. You know some of the technical delays, and I think we were a little chatty and we started a little late. Um, so all of that pushed us past the two-hour mark, which I don't like to do. But you know we got all of our items through there. So again, uh, if you bought from any of the individual items, I will say empty nesting to uh, Maria. You picked up the Brush McCoy slash the Ewer, so that you were the winner of that item. Um, if you claimed any of the individual items, make sure you send an email to the individual seller. If you missed anybody's emails, go ahead and send an email to me. My email is running across the bottom of the screen, uh, so you can just send it to me and I can pass it on to the right person. I appreciate everyone joining the sale tonight. Um, we're gonna have another one next week where I will have actually all newbies. So definitely mark your calendars, definitely show some support for some new people coming out. Will of Vintageous Vintage is coming in uh, from Canada. She'll be a part of her first sale next week, uh, as well as Poteet's uh, Vintage. And um, yeah, I should have looked this up before I said it. Uh, somebody else has a new one too, and I, I've lost my list here. Uh, last week is also, oh, Hemlock Lady. So Tania from Hemlock Lady, she'll be doing, she, this will not be her first sale. When we first set it up, it would have been her first. She's actually done some others, but those will be our sellers next week. So please uh, join that. Also mark your calendars for tomorrow night. Um, I grabbed some of the schedule for tomorrow. Uh, Doggone Happy Vintage has a 1 p.m. live sale. The Niche Lady, Danny, has a live sale at 4. Crafty Jackie has her live sale at 6. 
Nesting Haven at seven, Real Nifty Vintage at eight, Fatbird Finds at 10. So you have an entire day of live sales and events that you can participate in. Uh, so again, thanks everyone for joining. Thank you very much to Katie and to George uh, for joining the uh, uh, sale tonight. And uh, everyone have a great night. Thanks for your time. Thanks for putting your trust into Trusty Huckster. Have a great night. Bye-bye.